Okay, so uh, first we will start with the importance of UI UX and these are the points. So I'm going to cover these all points. So in today's digital world actually, UI means user interface and UX means user experience play a critical role in shaping the success of uh, any online platform, products and digital devices. Digital devices means mobile phone, uh, laptops, smartphone, even the kiosk means ATM kiosk and services, uh, all the services means all the online services. So from website and mobile application to software interfaces, UI UX design has become the cornerstone of delivering exceptional user experiences. And UI means user interface that refers to the visual elements and interactive components of a digital product. UI encompasses everything that user can see and interact with on the screen, such as buttons, menus, icons, layouts, etc. On the other hand, UX means user experience is the overall experience users have while interacting with a digital product. It goes beyond the visual appeal and includes factors like ease of use, efficiency, accessibility, and emotional satisfaction. So the first point is enhancing user satisfaction. One of the primary reasons UI UX is essential because its direct impact on user satisfaction. A well-designed digital product ensures that user can easily navigate through the platform uh, and user can find what they need and accomplish their task effortlessly. A positive experience increases user engagement and encourages users to return to the return to the platform in the future. Conversely, a poorly designed UI UX can lead to frustration, confusion, and user abandonment. I know many of you have uh, used or still using multiple online store or e-commerce site like Facebook, sorry, uh, Flipkart, Amazon, Mintra, Agio. But when it comes to reliability, satisfaction, you choose only one or two sites or application. Means you do not need to answer this question, but just think which e-commerce site you will choose for placing an order for apparel or clothes. So now you will find there are only one or two applications that came in your mind instantly. Though you have multiple apps, you have used multiple applications and website, but uh, instantly you will find only two, one or two names. Because at a certain level, they were able to satisfy you with their services and products. That's why you were able to recall that particular application or a website. So the next point is building brand identity. UI UX design also contributes significantly to shaping a brand's identity and reputation. I know some of you are a strong believer of packaging, icons, marketing, social media posts. These are the things which helps in the brand building identity, but an application which follows brand guidelines help brands to build brand identity. Consistent and visually appealing design elements across digital uh, products create a strong brand image and improve brand recognition. An excellent design can differentiate a brand from its competitors and leave a lasting impression on user. The next point is increasing conversion rate. So UI UX directly impacts conversion rates, especially in e-commerce and other online services. A well-designed and intuitive interface can guide user through the conversion funnel. That means if you want to replace an order or if you want to opt for a service inside an application or website, if you want to delete even you if, even if you want to delete your account from Facebook, Instagram, or any uh, website or any services, you find the application or website easy to use and the navigation is well defined. You do not feel lost anywhere inside the website or application. That makes more likely for you to complete purchase or sign up for particular services. Additionally, seamless user experience reduces bounce rate and increases the likelihood of conversion. 
Now uh, you might have a question, what is bounce rate? So bounce rate is when user visits any website and without performing any action or without visiting any other pages, they leaves. So if it happens uh, with your website, that means you need to fix, uh, fix that because that's not good for your business. Next one is uh, fostering user loyalty. This is just a connecting point with the first point, means the enhancing user satisfaction. So users are more likely to remain loyal to a platform that provides them with a positive and enjoyable experience. Design that prioritize user need and preferences, foster user loyalty and encourages repeat widgets. Satisfied users are more likely to recommend the platform to others, which can lead to organic growth and increased user base. Just think of any product that you referred to your family or friend. That was because of the satisfaction. You received the satisfaction and the product had fulfilled your needs and your satisfaction. That's why you recommended that, that product or application with your family and friend. So next point is gaining competitive advantage. In a crowded digital landscape, UI UX can be a key differentiator for businesses. Companies that invest in creating delightful user experience gain a competitive advantage over those that neglect it. An exceptional UI UX can attract new users, retain existing ones, and position the platform as a leader in its industry. I have a real example on this uh, actually. So recently I was looking for some product and I found that product was only available on one site and the site name was Vli Bajar. You can search after this session, the site name was Vli Bajar, V-L-E and Bajar. So when I visited uh, their website, I was not able to find what should I do? How can I place the order? But somehow I managed to place the order. But believe me, even after placing the order, I struggled getting my order. So I am not defaming this website particularly. I'm just giving you an real practical example. And this is just for education purpose. So, but I must say, Vli Bajar concept and the problem solving, they are, uh, the problem they are trying to solve is a very unique uh, problem they are trying to solve, but the whole experience is not good. That's why I was not satisfied with that particular website. And because of that, they lost my loyalty and they are not getting the competitive advantage. Next point is optimizing performance and efficiency. So effective design, effective UI UX design streamlines user interactions and reduces friction. Intuitive navigation, clear call to action buttons and well-organized content enhance user productivity and overall efficiency. This optimization is particularly crucial in productivity, means productivity software, where even small improvements in usability can lead to significant time and cost saving. For example, you have downloaded a, a calculator app in your phone, but before using that calculator, the app is asking to fill your name and email ID. So, these are not uh, relevant, right? So what they're going to do with our name and our email ID, because we are only using the calculator. And the other example is you have made a website, you have designed a website which sells clothes, but you forgot to provide the site selection button. So a user trying to place an order for a shirt or for a kurti, but user is not able to select the site for that particular cloth. So these designs are not efficient and not performing well. So you should take care of these points. Next point is adapting to changing user expectation. So as technology evolves and user preferences change, UI UX design must adapt accordingly. Design trends, user behaviors, and technology advancements influence the expectations of users. 
to remain relevant and competitive digital products must continually update and improve their ui ux to align with these changing demands again uh, for an example so many ott application like hotstar comes with on screen volume and brightness control on the right side you will get the volume control uh, on the screen volume control on and on the left side when you will uh, scroll up and scroll down on the left portion of the screen on the mobile screen so you will control the brightness of the screen so if as a designer you are not aware of this practices and you launched your video player without that feature now what will happen your your application is not at the level of users expectation so always try to adapt and try to change and try to learn the users expectation before designing any application or any product yeah so the design has become pivotal element in the realm of digital design significantly influencing how users interact with technology but in 2023 the dynamic landscape of ui ux is undergoing rapid changes with exciting trends shaping the way designers create engaging and intuitive experiences so first point i would like to discuss is the immersive storytelling i hope uh, the video is playing on the screen let me check yeah so immersive immersive storytelling is an emerging trend that captivates user by presenting content in a narrative driven manner yeah and allowing the user to be more engaged and emotionally connected This approach is particularly evident in websites and application that aim to deliver brand message or try to showcase products and services creatively. In this shown example, here when you scroll, you will get the story of the brand or the product, and this is also called scory, uh, scrolly, sorry, scrolly telling. So let me uh, play again this video. So this is actually a scrolly telling. when you will scroll this website you will get the whole story without reading any text or any content so the next thing is 3d and ar means augmented reality so the integration of 3d elements and ar means augmented reality into ux design has become more prevalent in 2023 companies like furniture retailers now offer AR enabled apps allowing customer or users to visualize how furniture places uh, how furniture furniture uh, places at your place uh, and how it will look in your home before making a purchase this interactive and immersive experience reduces uncertainty and enhances your satisfaction means user satisfaction and we recently saw the announcement of apple vision right so let me play this video this video has taken from the apple vision ar so ar is the new feature and we should start learning uh the all the design guidelines that apple has been provided for vision ar this might be overwhelming for to, for you so i'm just going to the next slide the next is vui so the rise of voice assistant yeah the rise of voice assistant and smart speakers has paved the way for vui means voice user interfaces to gain okay skip this part so vui offers a hand hands free and convenient way for users to interact with digital product a well known example is recipe app that incorporates voice commands guiding users step by step thorough 
cooking process without having to touch means the without having to touch the screen these are the perfect ui for the person who cooks regularly like this can help your mom or if you uh, cooks uh, often you can use this kind of application and you can use vui because you do, do not have to touch the screens so when your hands are dirty when your hands are full or engaged you can use vui yeah so the next thing is personalization and customization and personalization and customization actually become critical components of ui ux design by analyzing user behavior and preferences designers can tailor interfaces to meet individual needs social media platforms for example use personalized content feeds ensuring that user are presented with content that aligns with their interest enhancing engagement and user retention for example reels or youtube shorts when you watch certain video you start getting same kind of videos to watch okay so this one is for uh, data visualization so the ability to present complex data in a clear and visually appealing manner is an essential aspect of the design data visualization technique are actually increasingly used in various application from business analytics dashboard to fitness tracking application these visual representation makes data more digestible enabling users to gain valuable insights quickly so micro uh, micro uh, interactions are the new trend and these are subtle momentary animations and these actually these interactions actually gives the user a feedback that occurs when user clicks somewhere or perform any actions micro interactions provide a sense of direct interactions making digital experience more enjoyable and responsive for example a ride sharing application might incorporate a delightful animation when the user confirms a ride request reassuring them that their action was successful in 2023 trend dark mode has gained immense popularity not only uh, for its aesthetics but also for its impact on ux means user experience it uh, yeah it reduces eye strain but exceptions are everywhere somebody likes something and somebody hates something but most of the person like the dark mode because it conserves device battery if you are using oled screens and improves readability in the low light conditions many applications and website now offer a dark mode option including social media platforms productivity apps and even operating system yeah the next thing is typography so typography plays a significant role in ui ux design and affecting both aesthetic and readability in 2023 designers are experimenting with bold and eye catching typography means they are pairing a font with bold and eye catching fonts along with creating creative font pairing to make interfaces stand out just take an example of a, a mobile banking application uh, which utilizes a combination of a sleek and modern font for headings and a friendly legible font for body text creating a balanced and appealing visual hierarchy yeah this one is very interesting so actually designers deal with two important states first one is empty state and second one is the error state so error can be frightening and empty screen can be dull however both are essential aspect of the software web pages and applications to enhance user experience designers 
are working designers works on the illustrations to make it more engaging and user friendly so they uses illustrations or exciting copies 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 means the writing like page not found or you are on a different space these kind of copies that make the user more engaging means user engages with these kind of mpt and error pages more and they won't feel dull anymore yeah so logging in without password is becoming increasingly popular due to users often forgetting their password on online platforms password retains uh, password reset options are there and we all uses those reset password option very commonly but password can be challenging for user to remember as they typically involve a mixture of uh, numbers upper case lower case and special characters to address this pro problem modern ui design are introducing alternative login methods these includes face authentication or facial recognition fingerprints or a very simple uh, thing is otp one time password by adopting these options user can securely access their accounts without the hassle of remembering complex passwords okay so uh, in this we are going to talk about talk about the symmetrical and asymmetrical websites so the traditional symmetric design is no longer as attractive as it is used to be like 4 or 5 years ago it has become repetitive leading designers to move away from strict grids and embrace asymmetry instead symmetry design is a kind of a fixed grid and layout and you see 90% of the website in a single day whenever you open any website in your normal days you find the website layout is in a symmetrical manner and the asymmetry is now the new trend in the ui design adding a special charm and dynamic flair to the visuals thanks to the numerous creative uh, options it offers after this session you can visit this website also the website uh, is the outline outline uses symmetrical plus asymmetrical layouts and they have in, uh, used this both part very beautifully so uh, crafting an asymmetrical layout requires careful thought and planning you cannot simply place elements haphazardly instead you need to consider usability and accessibility ignoring these aspect might confuse uh, your users and make it difficult for them to navigate through your design uh if i simply put you need to master design basics then the symmetrical design then you can break the laws of conventional design which also follows the guidelines guidelines means the accessibility guidelines and the inclusivity in your design next point is minimalist and ethical design in ui ux so first we will talk about the what is minimalist design so minimalistic uh, design is a philosophy that advocate simplicity and clarity in design removing any unnecessary elements that do not add value to the user experience the key principle of the minimalistic design includes uh, first one is simplicity so simplicity means uh, emphasizing on a clean uncluttered interface with a focus on essential elements second one is visual hierarchy hierarchy means prioritizing content based on importance ensuring users can easily understand the information presented <clears throat> third one is negative space allowing for uh, sufficient empty space around elements to improve readability and reduce visual noise fourth one is limited color palette using a restricted set of uh, set of colors to maintain coherence and harmony in the design and the last point is flat design if you have just started designing try to not incorporate the 3d gradient and multiple uh, complex design you can start with a flat design means you can use a monochromatic palette or you can use the 2d illustrations only now we will talk about the advantage of the minimalistic design 
So when you use minimalistic design, actually it improves the user engagement. Means minimalistic design reduces distraction and directs user attention to the most relevant content, leading to increased user engagement. Second point is very important. That is faster load time. By keeping the design simple and lightweight, minimalism improves loading time and enhances the overall user experience. Third point is enhanced user understanding. Clear visual hierarchy and streamlined layout helps user in quickly grasping the content and functionality to the interface. And the fourth one is timelessness. Minimalistic design tend to age well as they are not tied to trendy elements that may become outdated quickly. So if I would give you an example, so Google uh, search engine is an excellent example of the minimalistic design. The home page consists of a logo, a search bar, and a few buttons. The simplicity and lack of unnecessary elements allow users to focus solely on their search query. The minimalistic approach has played a significant role in Google's success as a search engine, making it uh, one of the most visited website globally. So uh, as technology becomes more uh, ingrained in our daily lives, so ethically, ethical concern about data privacy, psychological manipulation, and addictive behaviors have emerged. Ethical design places a strong emphasis on user well-being, well -being, transparency, and respect for their rights. So the key aspect of the eth ethical design includes Privacy by design. That means ensuring data privacy and security are integral part of the design process, not just an afterthought. You need to take care of the data since you have started the research phase for the for your product. Second, is, second one is user empowerment. Providing users with control over their data and choices without restoring to dark tactics or manipulative tactics. Third one is accessibility. Designing interfaces that are inclusive and accessible to all users, regardless of their abilities. Fourth point is transparency. Being upfront about the data collection and uses. Okay, so transparency. Uh, okay, it uh, actually builds a trust between the user and the product. So if we are maintaining a, maintaining a transparency, what we are going to uh, do with their data means if we have downloaded a calculator and calculator is asking for your name and email ID means the application is not transparent. So a transparent app ask only the relevant data, not your private data. So what are the advantages of ethical design? So first it builds user trust and duality. Ethical design establishes trust leading to increased user duality and uh, positive word to mouth, word of mouth. And word of mouth helps to refer a certain product or application. Second point is legal compliance. Ethical design ensures compliance with privacy laws and regulations safeguarding the company from potential legal issues. I hope uh, you have idea about the Europe online platform laws. They are very strict, European countries. And the third point is long-term success. Prioritizing user well-being foster long-term success by promoting positive user experience. Let me uh, give you some example, like Apple's app store, the screenshot I have shared with you. So Apple app store, exemplifies ethical design by maintaining strict guidelines and curating apps to protect users from potentially harmful content. The company places great emphasis on data privacy and has implemented features like app tracking, 
app tracking uh, plus the transparency, allowing user to control how apps track their data. This approach has, has not only strengthened user trust, but also enhanced Apple's reputation as a privacy conscious brand. Okay, so minimalism and ethical design can work hand in hand to create powerful and impactful UI UX experiences. By embracing both principles, designers can craft interfaces that are not only visually appealing, but also user-friendly and respectful of users' rights and privacy. So Dropbox is the best example, which signers in minimalism and ethical design. It employs minimalist design principle, to create an uncluttered and user-friendly interface. The clean layout allows users to focus on their files and interactions with ease. Additionally, Dropbox adheres to ethical design practices by providing users with control over sharing settings and ensuring data privacy and security are paramount for Dropbox. Plus, they also help the user to keep their data private. Yeah, so uh, we were talking about the dark mode and the color scheme. So uh, actually in the recent years, UI UX designers have become exploring innovative ways to actually enhance the user experience. And we designers does that means every, uh, every year and every day to make our design more uh, uh, engaging and other than the market, uh, other than the competitors. So we always try to improve our design and try to uh, make our design uh, distinct from the other designers. Okay, so among the prominent trends, dark mode and strategic color schemes actually emerged. So dark mode also actually known as night mode, as a in a UI design actually uh, it garnered immense popularity due to its aesthetic appeal and user centric benefits. It involves a color scheme where the primary background is dark, usually black or dark gray, but we never use the uh, pure black because in nature there is no color that is a pure black. Pure black means a uh, black hole. So even uh, I read somewhere that even the black hole is not purely black. So I have no idea about, the, about that topic actually. So, and the text and the other UI elements are presented in Contrasting uh, means we use a lighter color that make contrast with the background, means the black color or the shades or tints of the blacks. So this shifts from the traditional light background uh, and it has the roots in the uh, elevating eye stray. But in some cases, people find this opposite. Uh, it also conserves device battery, as I said earlier, and fosters an immersive user experience. Multiple websites and application has a feature of changing modes between lighter and darker thing. Uh, and we talked about the dark mode and the color scheme. In the continuation, this is the sub part of that dark mode and color scheme. I, again, maybe it is not changing. Yeah, it's changed. Yeah, so uh, we will talk about the color psychology. So crafting emotional connection, colors actually plays a crucial role in evoking emotion, and creating a specific atmosphere within a digital platform. Color psychology uh, is the study of how colors influence human behavior and perception, and allowing you, means allowing designers to strategically use colors to establish brand identity and foster emotional connection with users. Let's uh, understand this with example. The music streaming platform Spotify, I hope you all have used this particular application. And this application is renowned for its clever use of colors. The vibrant green, the green color actually evokes feelings of energy, growth, and positivity, aligning perfectly with the platform's purpose of providing users with an enjoyable music experience. Moreover, the use of warm contrasting colors in their playlist and album covers engages user on an emotional level and encourages exploration of new music genres. And it's, it also breaks the visual monotonicity. Yeah, the next point is uh, harmony in color scheme. So 
promoting coherence and consistency selecting the right color schemes uh, is very essential in ensuring a cohesive and visually harmonious design designers utilizes various color combination and techniques such as monochromatic complementary uh, analogous color schemes to create a sense of balance and consistency in the overall ui ux design for example uh, two colors that are on opposite sides in the color wheel is a complementary color and also there are other colors combination as well uh, which you can explore uh, and these colors like uh, color uh, schemes like monochromatic analogous uh, triad triad split complementary tetradic and there are more color uh, combination as well apart from these six and these color schemes also uh, helps the photographer uh, also because they also use the complementary color schemes uh, actually what they does they Sorry. So what uh, actually photographer does, they use uh, these kind of color wheels and they place the person in a background which is complement, which gives complement to the subject. If some uh, female or uh, some male wears a red shirt, if you place them on a green backdrop, so these two colors are complementary. Likewise, blue and yellow is a complementary color. You have seen uh, these colors uh, in many places. Many uh, companies like Burger King, if I'm not wrong, they use the same uh, color scheme, the complementary color scheme, blue and yellow combination. So these are the color wheels, and these are very helpful if you are a designer, any kind of designer, graphic designer, UI UX designer, even you are a, if you are a photographer, you can use these color wheels. Yeah, now uh, I will talk about the power of contrast. So enhancing readability uh, and accessibility, contrast is a fundamental aspect of UI UX design, especially in dark mode interfaces uh, where the visual distinction between the foreground and background elements becomes critical. Proper contrast enhances readability and it reduces eye strain. You can uh, see uh, those problems in the left and right side of the images. You can find it more easily more readable on the right side you can read spatial offer and the cta more easily as compared to the left uh, left one so the contrast ratio for the left side is not good as compared to the right one so black background with white text creates a sharp contrast and makes the text stand out prominently these are the best contrast ratio when you are using a white background with black text and vice versa so the, this not only enhances readability, but also aligns with accessibility, accommodating users with visual impairments or sensitivity to bright screens when you are using a dark theme and a lighter, uh, lighter text. Okay. So this trend means micro interaction has gained tremendous traction in recent years. And multiple application and multiple website have integrated this micro, micro interaction in their product. And this is a kind of chunk that we have taken from the larger, uh, uh, from the larger part of animation. Animation is a very larger picture and we just took a smaller part of this, that animation and we tried to implement those animation inside our application and inside the products means website application uh, in software also when you delete something uh, from your windows laptop you get the micro interactions that some file is deleting when you transfer some file you get the micro interaction as well so It actually helps user and uh, we all get the feedback when we get the micro, micro interaction animation. When we uh, pay some amount uh, by using any UPI or any credit card uh, application, we get a confirmation or a validation. Yeah. So there is a mi micro copy like, yeah, your payment has uh, been successful. You paid successfully. And we get an animation, a micro animation, uh, which is like a confetti or a tick, uh, tick animation. Yeah, your payment uh, has been done. So these kind of animation is very important. These gives us a validation of feedback 
without reading any text we get to know that the uh, action has been done successfully so these uh, actually contribute significantly to user engagement by creating a sense of intuitiveness responsiveness and dynamism in digital interfaces when user interact with an application or a website and receive immediate and subtle feedback it reinforces a positive experience encouraging user or encouraging them to explore further for example consider how a simple simple button animation transform a mundane click into a delightful experience when a user hovers over a button means user don't click on any button any cta button just hover over it so it could change color or it could change its size slightly and it provides a instant visual feedback that the button is interactive you can interact with that button so this small animation not only indicates the button's functionality but also creates a satisfying moment for the user if i would uh, give you any uh, real world example so facebook reaction or you can take an example of instagram uh, heart emoji when you like someone's picture you get a micro interaction uh, that the the heart the stroke shaped heart just uh, get red when you like someone images on instagram so these are the micro interaction even in the google material design you get a ripple ripple effect of uh, micro interaction when you click somewhere uh, on the application which are using google material design you will get a ripple effect on the cta when you click on the cta so micro interaction and animation undoubtedly undoubtedly enhances the user experience but designer must strike a balance between visual appeal and performance overly complex or excessive animation can lead to longer loading time especially on devices with limited processing power or slower internet connection thus it is essential to optimize and prioritize animation based on their significance and impact on the overall ux so impl uh, so effective implementation of micro interactions uh, and animations require careful consideration of the context and purpose designers must identify the key touch points and interactions that benefit from animation and tailor them accordingly according to the user needs according to the user environment according to the use cases unnecessary or distracting animation can lead to a cluttered user experience defeating the purpose of their integration for instance consider a travel app that uses a subtle animation to display the loading for uh, loading progress when uh, searching for flights this animation keeps user informed about the progress without interrupting their browsing experience in contrast using complex animation while navigating the app could create confusion and impede the user's journey seamless integration of micro interaction and animation can contribute to a meaningful user journey for example a shopping a shopping app that implements smooth product image transition uh, as user swipe or as you swipe through items create a sense of continuity replicating the experience of flipping through a physical means a real catalog so this not only makes the user journey enjoyable but also increase the likelihood of a user spending more time exploring that product or that or any particular product so micro interaction and animation can also serve as a means of communication for a brand by incorporating unique and branded animation uh, companies can reinforce their identity and create memorable impression on users for instance or for example a stream a streaming platform may use distinctive loading animations that reflect their logo or theme as you can see uh, the youtube animation the uh, on the splash screen you will get the idea they use their distinctive loading animation and that's the way to launch our brand and communicate our brand identity 
via micro interactions. So next one is responsive versus adaptive design. Actually users interact with uh, websites and application on various devices, including smartphones, tablets, laptops, desktop, even the smart TVs and uh, smart watches. So the challenges for designers, for UI UX designers, is to ensure that their designs are accessible and visually appealing across these diverse platform. Uh, this has actually given rise to two essential concepts in digital design, and that are responsive design and adaptive design. So responsive design is an approach to a web design that aims to create a website that automatically adjust and adapt to different screen sizes and orientation, or you can say the view, uh, the view board. The key goal is to provide users with a consistent and optimal viewing experience regardless of the size they use. This is achieved by using uh, flexible grids, images, and CSS media queries that detect the user's screen size and adjust the layout accordingly. So uh, just tell me which one is the responsive design, left one or right one? You can uh, comment it down. So which one is the responsive design, left one or right one? Now I'm going to talk about the adaptive design. So adaptive design is the other hand, on the other hand, involves creating multiple versions of a website or application explicitly tailored to different devices or screen sizes. Means instead of relying on flexible layouts that we were doing in the responsive design, adaptive design actually relies on predefined layout optimized for specific screen resolution and the sizes or the device categories. So let's summarize uh, all this in three points. The first point I would say the approach means responsive design uses a flexible and fluid layout while adaptive design employs fixed layout for specific device categories. Second point is flexibility means responsive design can adapt to any screen size uh, within its defined breakpoints while adaptive design offers a tailored experience for predefined screen sizes or device types. And third point is implementation. Responsive design uses CSS media query to adjust styles based on the user's device, while adaptive design requires server side detection to serve different templates or the sizes, or they can detect from server side which device the user is currently using. So now the next point is importance of responsive and adaptive design. So user have become increasingly demanding when it comes to seamless experience. So by adopting responsive and adaptive design, designers can ensure their website and application are user-friendly and visually appealing, leading to higher user engagement and user's satisfaction. Next point is responsive and adaptive design make digital content accessible to a broader range of users, including those with disabilities, as it accommodates different assistive technologies and screen sizes. Next point is SEO, means search engine optimization. So search engines prioritize mobile friendly websites. Websites that are responsive or adaptive tend to rank higher in search results, leading to increased visibility and organic traffic. Next point is future proofing. With the ever increasing variety of devices and in, in, uh, screen sizes, designing with responsiveness and adaptability in mind, it makes your uh, product future proof. Future proof. Next point is cost effectiveness. Instead of building separate application for each platform, responsive and adaptive design allows for a single, single code base that can optimize for various devices and reduces development cost. So what are the best practices for responsive and adaptive design? The first thing is mobile first approach. Designers should prioritize the mobile version of the website or application as it sets the foundation for the experience on larger screens. Next point is content priority. 
ensure that the most important content is prominently displayed regardless of the screen size and it maintains user engagement. You can learn these points also inside the hierarchy. There are visual hierarchy, there are font hierarchy, there are multiple hierarchy we use. Next point is performance optimization. Optimize images and reduce unnecessary elements to enhance loading times on mobile devices with limited bandwidth. And the last point is user testing. Conduct thorough testing on various devices to identify and resolve issues related to responsiveness and adaptability. Now we'll talk about the AI. So actually AI has uh, uh, permeated various aspects of our lives as uh, it's no surprise that it's transforming the landscape of digital design, particularly in UI UX design. AI powered UI UX uh, has the potential to revolutionize the way we interact with digital products and services offering a more personalized, efficient, and intuitive user experience. So we will talk about these points. Let's start with the personalization through AI. So AI algorithm can analyze user behavior, preferences, and historical data to create personalized experience. A remarkable example is Spotify. Spotify's Discover Weekly Playlist so using AI, Spotify curate a unique playlist for each user, suggesting songs based on users' listening, history, and preferences. This AI-powered personalization not only keeps users engaged, but also increases user satisfaction and retention. So AI-driven chatbots are uh, and virtual assistants have become ubiquitous in various applications from customer support to e-commerce these conversational interfaces leverage nlp means natural language processing and ml means machine learning algorithms to understand user queries and provide relevant responses one uh, actually outstanding example is google assistant which can assist users with tasks answer user's question, and even engage in uh, natural sounding conversation. Means Google Assistant won't sound like uh, a robotic sound. Next point is predictive UI. So AI powered predictive UI enhances the user experience by anticipating user intention and actions. For example, Google Smart Compose in Gmail predicts what the user is typing and offers suggestion to complete their sentence. This feature not only saves times, time, but also reduces typing errors and improves overall productivity. AI has made significant advancement in image and voice recognition, enabling more natural and intuitive interactions with digital interfaces. The best example is Google Lens, Google Lens is a prime example of AI-powered image recognition. Actually, you can point your phone camera at the object, landmark, or text, and you will get a relevant information, translation, and shopping options. If you, have, if you have not tried, you should try Google Lens after this session. Next point is emotional AI. And this one is also known as affective computing. This one is a rapidly growing field that focuses on understanding and responding to human emotions. Emotionally intelligent interfaces can adapt their behavior based on user's emotion, leading to more empathetic and supportive interactions. Uh, for an example, uh, Effectivas Emotion AI, ER, you can search this uh, on Google, Effectivas, A -F -F -E A-F-F-E-C-T-I-V-A, Emotion AI, and this can detect emotion through facial expressions and your voice tone. And it provides valuable insight for UX designer and market researchers. Next one is AI-driven content generator. I am sure you all are using, and most of you are using ChatGPT, but there are other AI tools like copy.ai or Articolo. 
uh, which can automatically generate articles, blog posts, and social media content and product descriptions based on specified topics or keywords, or uh, in your term, uh, the prompt. So these tools, these AI tools, significantly speed up content creation process. Next point is AI enhanced user testing. So AI has also found its way into user testing methodologies. AI can analyze user interactions with a digital product and identify areas of improvement. For example, Maze, M-A-Z-E, M -A -Z -E, uses AI to convert design files into interactive prototypes and collects user data to generate actionable insights for designers to optimize their designs. And the last point is design automation and auto layout. AI can streamline the design process through automation. Tools like uh, UIZard, UIZARD, or Framer, even Wix, automatically generate UI design layout and responsive element based on your Miss Designer's initial input or your prompt. This enables designers to focus more on creative aspect and ideation rather than repetitive manual tasks. Now we will talk about the accessibility and inclusivity. So in the ever evolving landscape of digital design, one aspect has emerged as non-negotiable and that is creating inclusive and accessible user experiences. In the pursuit of creating captivating and innovative design, it is essential not to leave anyone behind. Accessibility and inclusivity in UI UX design mean ensuring that people with diverse abilities can access, navigate, and engage with digital products seamlessly. So uh, you have a question like, what is accessibility and inclusivity in UI UX design? So the accessibility and inclusivity in UI UX design involves making digital product usable and uh, enjoyable for everyone, including individuals with disabilities, the elderly person, and those with different cultural backgrounds. It encompasses various aspects, such as perceptibility, means ensuring information uh, is presented in multiple ways. Second point is operability, means enabling all users to interact with the interface and third point is underst uh, understandability means making content clear and straightforward by adopting inclusive design principles digital designers or ui UX designer can create interfaces that cater to a broader audience leaving no one excluded so uh, what are the impact of inclusive design on users? So there are three points. So I will discuss one by one. So we will, I will take the first point like empowering people with disabilities. So inclusively designed interfaces empowers people with disabilities to navigate the digital world effortlessly. For example, screen readers, actually it enables visually impaired user to access content while voice command assist those with uh, mobility impairment in interacting with apps and websites by providing alt text, alt text, alternative text for images, designer ensures that user will uh, user with a visual impairment can understand the context of visual element if the user is colorblind. Second point is enhancing user experience for all. So inclusivity driven design benefits all users. Means closed caption, CC that you have already seen in YouTube. So closed captions not only aid, actually this one is a subtitle. If you have no idea about closed captions, these are the subtitles. So closed captions not only uh, aid individuals with hearing impairments, uh, but also come in handy when users are in noisy environment or watching content without sound. Or even when you are traveling, you 
avoid giving volume up to your devices. So what you do, you watch the video and read the subtitles. Similarly, clear and readable typography benefits user of all ages, making content easily digestible for CC, means closed captions or subtitles. Next point is uh, broadening market reach. So designing with accessibility in mind expands the potential user base. According to WHO, means the World Health Organization, over 1 billion people globally have some form of disability. By ignoring accessibility, businesses risk aligning, alienating uh, the significant market share. Embracing inclusivity is therefore not only a social responsibility, but also a strategic advantage for the businesses. So I will give you some real examples. The first one is uh, Apple's uh, so Apple actually very committed to accessibility and we can evident through feature like voiceover and assistive touch. So voiceover, uh, what it does, voiceover reads out element on the screens, aiding users with visual impairment and assistive touch facilitates interaction uh, for individual with motor skill challenges by offering customizable touch gestures and device controls. Second example uh, is a Google's live caption, it automatically generate real-time captions for audio and video content, enabling users with hearing difficulties to consume multimedia. And you can, I think you can also on, uh, turn on and turn off the CC uh, in the Zoom application, if I'm not wrong. And the third uh, example is Airbnb. Airbnb's inclusivity effort include an accessibility filter Actually, they are using accessibility filter that allows user to search for accommodations with features such as step-free entry for the person who are uh, uh, older ages or the person who can't walk, the person uh, who is on the wheelchair, or a wide doorways. You can filter those things in uh, inside the Airbnb application. So companies that actually prioritize inclusivity and accessibility gains positive brand recognition and loyalty when users perceive a brand is socially responsible and cons uh, considerate of their needs they are more likely to become loyal customers and advocates or refer that application to the uh, uh, to their family or friends many countries have established laws and regulation requiring digital products to be accessible to all users by ensuring compliance, businesses avoid legal repercussion and demonstrate their commitment to social values. Actually, accessible design lead to improved user satisfaction and engagement, resulting in higher conversion rates. Users are more likely to spend time uh, on a website or application that caters to their specific need and preferences. So now uh, we will talk about the future predictions and speculation. So as we look ahead uh, to the future of UI UX design, it's essential to understand that digital landscape is constantly evolving. Predicting the exact trend for 2023 and beyond is challenging, but based on current developments and emerging technologies, we can make some informed speculation or some informed guess. So in that, the first point is hyper-personalized content delivery. So as AI-powered algorithms become more sophisticated, content delivery will become even more hyper-personalized. UI UX designer will need to collaborate with data scientists to create interfaces that deliver the, uh, deliver the right content to the right person or the right users and at the right time as well. For example, news app might dynamically adjust their content based on a user's interest, user's location, and user's browsing history. Or you can say the hyper-personalized content is a father of enhanced personalization. 
So what happens in enhanced personalization? So just imagine a shopping app that suggests product based not only on past purchases, but also on the user's preferences and lifestyle. This personalized approach will lead to increased user engagement and loyalty. So these are the predictions that uh, we can work on and we can uh, make ourselves aware and we can skill up on these fields and we can make ourselves future proof. Next point is neurodesign. Actually, neurodesign is an amal amal uh, amalgamation of psychology uh, and neuroscience. And this field is emerging very much and it explores how design elements can influence users' cognitive responses and emotions. In the future, UI UX designers might incorporate neuro design to create interfaces that elicit positive emotions and foster a deeper connection between users and digital products. This could include experimenting with specific color palettes, typography, and visual cues that trigger desired responses. Next point is AR, VR in UI UX. So AR and VR uh, have the potential to revolutionize UI UX design. VR has already made its mark in gaming and inter entertainment, but it holds great potential for other domains too. In the future, uh, we might see VR being used to create fully immersive and interactive digital experiences uh, from virtual showroom for products to virtual tours of real estate properties. Designers will need to optimize user interfaces for VR devices, ensuring seamless navigation and minimizing motion sickness. Next point is biometric authentication. A digital security become a paramount concern. Biometric authentication methods such as facial recognition and fingerprint uh, scanning will play a more prominent role in UI UX design. These methods offer a more secure and user-friendly alternative to traditional password-based authentication. Streaming user experience uh, while safeguarding sensitive data. I mean, biometric will be the new normal for all the devices, not for the digital devices, but for the automobile, even for the home. You can secure your home by the biometric uh, locks or lockers. And the last one is gesture-based interfaces. With the growing popularity of touchless uh, interactions, gesture-based interfaces are likely to gain momentum in the future, touchless and physical buttons may give uh, may uh, give away give way to intuitive hand movements and body gestures as primary means of interaction. Designer will need to anticipate users' action and create simple, clear visual cues to guide users through gesture control interfaces.